Country Bird Holdings is a leading integrated poultry producer in Southern Africa. Looking at some of the numbers recently reported, its South Africa business makes up 80% of group revenue and 38% of EBITDA, while its rest of Africa business rakes in 20% of group revenue, but 62% of EBITDA. So it's clear to see why an extension of its Africa strategy is on the cards for the group. And joining me now with more of the detail is Country Birds CFO Kieran Futter and RMB's uh, Praxio Diogenides as well. Thank you both for joining us today. Kieran, I've outlined some of the earnings that you've already managed to generate from your rest of Africa operations versus South Africa. What are some of the future growth targets you've got in mind? Yeah, I think as you correctly pointed out, our growth path is mainly into Africa. We have some great growth plans in South Africa as well. Um, but we see the diversification in, into Africa um, over the next five years as one of our key strategic priorities. Um, we've got a great business in Nigeria that we bought and turned around um, by implementing our local management team there. Uh, we see uh, a thriving business and opportunity in East Africa, um, and then continuing great results from our Zambian business. We've just signed a, um, a distribution agreement with Aviation to get the exclusive distribution rights for the Ross uh, bird, um, which would give us access to 46 countries uh, throughout Africa. But as the saying goes, Africa is not for chickens or something like that, right? Uh, what are some of the challenges you've come up against extending that African footprint? There's many, many stories of, of many companies who've um, you know, failed in Africa. I think our shareholders are very uh, clear that we aren't there to impose a South African way of doing things into Africa. Each African country is unique very different ways of doing business um, and what we do is we work with the local management teams there. There's not a South African manager sitting over, uh, over a local guy. We use guys who know the business, who know the market there um, and I think that's been a su success. We um, are hesitant to start greenfield operations. Typically we buy an existing business and turn it around with some of the knowledge that we have from our South African businesses. But I think that's the key sort of um, success factor for us. So, Praxia, what are some of the solutions you're putting on the table, you know, in helping tackle these challenges or some of these challenges at least head on? Sure. So, I mean, from an R&B perspective, um, I, I, you know, the initial discussions were around looking at how, from a, from a South Africa perspective, um, Kieran and the team could manage their, their banking business um, in a more centralized um, way. And um, when we sort of did a bit of a deeper analysis around their business and what's important for them, um, you know, we realized that um, RMB could certainly solution for that. Um, we had the infrastructure, we had the good teams on the ground. We knew that from an Africa perspective, I mean, it was quite clear um, that, that their strategy was, was to, to expand Africa. And that was um, RMB, that's RMB's strategy too, um, and to partner with our clients in, in these geographies. Um, and, and thankfully, you know, we, we obviously very uh, much present there, we, we on the ground, um, and our teams already had some form of a relationship with the country bird teams in those countries. So that also helped us, um, especially in Zambia um, and, and Botswana, we had some uh, a relationship already. Praxia, it's a multi-jurisdictional view that you've adopted here and you've priced accordingly. So how much better a pricing structure are we looking at now for the rest of Africa operations? Well, um, look, the deal was quite complex, um, still a little complex, but um, and that's with Country Bird. I mean, they do, um, you know, they, they are quite a nimble and um, how can I say a more, um, you know, they, they expect you to innovate like they do. Um, and, and I think that's probably where we, we sort of connected. Um, so, so what we did is from a pricing perspective, um, we looked at all these jurisdictions, we looked at how they were doing, um, you know, we, we looked at how we can package a solution and a funding solution for them um, that will give them the benefit of price um, looking at all of these um, uh, entities as well as their growth strategy and how they're currently doing. Kieran, is this what won, won you over? Because it's not the first time RMBs approached country birds, right? You were approached five years ago. You said no then. So why the, the shift now and uh, the decision to embark on this relationship? 
Yeah, I think five years ago, the African business um, wasn't as big as it is now. It wasn't doing as well. I think the management team at the time had a very good re relation with the incumbent bank. Um, and, you know, Praxia and the RMB team presented a solution to us where, you know, dealing with one primary banker in all uh, the, the, the localities that we operate in was, was a big plus. The pricing was very attractive, um, the, the, the whole package of the pricing. And I think more importantly for us, uh, because as Praxia mentioned, we are a very nimble um, uh, business and our shareholders are always out shopping in Africa. We needed a bank that can move quickly, um, that can make decisions quickly and then you know, provide funding for us so we can deploy capital quickly where we need to. Yeah. Do you come in with regards to a tweaking of the growth strategy that's already in play, Pratia, or is it a case more so of, uh, you know, client says, banker does? <laughs> Look, I think um, it's a partnership. So um, that discussion happens, you know, between ourselves and and Country Bird. Um, you know, they they know their business very well. They know, um, uh, and I mean, the, the the current shareholders have been in this business for for many many years. Very committed to this business. Um, so there is there is a there is a form of sort of discussion and and you know on how to do things and you know, where we can help um, you know but obviously the it, it's quite a new uh, relationship and that's part of what we'd like to get to is a position where we can actually you know suggest advise um, bring opportunities to the client um, at the moment you know they've they have been doing that themselves. Yeah. Um, so the need hasn't been that, uh, but obviously down the line from an advising perspective, that's, that's really where we want to get to, is, is get to um, advise on some opportunities that we could work together with them on. It has been labeled a relationship play, right? So how much cross-selling opportunity potential mm -hmm. have you identified? Look, uh, there, there's definitely um, we we've uh, there's there's a lot of opportunities currently, but um, and and um, you know Kieran and the team have supported us very well on this in the countries as well, um, so that we unlocking as we speak and and you know um, having a new relationship like this does take time to implement um, because it's not just about the nuts and bolts, it's about the the, the relationship, it's any um, any new opportunities that come around, any new opportunities we can bring to the client. Um, and, you know, new solutions, new products. So it, it is a process that needs to unfold. But currently, um, there, there has been, uh, you know, a few opportunities that we've um, uncovered and we're going to be discussing with a client. Praxia, Kieran, a pleasure catching up with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much.